So we're here now chatting with Michael Rubinoff, who is the producer and associate dean at Sheridan College outside of Toronto in Ontario, Canada, and also heads up the Canadian Musical Theatre Project, which among other things, many other things, has to its credit uh, come from away the musical that was just recently nominated for a Tony and has won many, many, many awards um, in addition to that Tony nomination and a win uh, for Best Director in, in in the Tonys. Uh, so Michael, um, I'd, I'd love to start by chatting with you about how you got started at Sheridan, especially because your background is more in the business arena. And what was it that made you shift to your work at Sheridan? Uh, can you talk about that to begin with? Sure. I, I was a, a practicing lawyer and parallel to my law career, I was producing theater in Toronto, which I continued to do, also developing new musicals. I had always had a relationship with Sheridan. For those that don't know, Sheridan is the premier training program for music theater performance in Canada. And I had often uh, come to many of the shows at Sheridan year after year, hired many Sheridan alum, and chaired the professional advisory committee uh, for the music theater performance program. And it was Sheridan that came knocking one day that said, you know, they were looking for a new associate dean and thought I'd be a, a good person to take that job. And December 31st, 2010, I worked uh, my last day as a lawyer, as a practicing lawyer, and January 3rd, 2011, uh, walked into Sheridan College. That's fantastic. And as you mentioned, it's a, it's a premier program for musical theater, for training musical theater performers. Can you talk to us a little bit about the program itself? Sure. So Sheridan is a conservatory, conservatory style program. Uh, up until about four years ago, it was a three-year advanced diploma, what we call in Canada. And it's transitioned now to a four-year honors bachelor's degree in music theater performance. And there is training in music, jazz, tap, ballet, and certainly musical theater styles, uh, vocal performance, and of course, acting uh, all through a musical theater lens. And at the center of what we do is creativity, uh, is using creativity and encouraging a number of projects um, for our students to create uh, different types of works uh, within the musical theater sphere and in their fourth year I'll, I'll segue nicely in their fourth year uh, they participate in the Canadian Music Theater Project uh, where they are required to apply the skills they've used in the previous or they've learned in the previous three years to working on a new musical. Great, and I want to talk more about the Canadian Musical Theatre yeah. Project in a moment, but just first I wanted to also mention that um, uh, my background, I, I actually was, was uh, I lived in Toronto for many, many years, the early part of my career, and I was a performer and director and dramaturg in Toronto for many years, and, and I, have, I have seen firsthand, because I have worked at the Canadian Musical Theatre Project, that the staff at Sheridan is made up of, um, of professionals from the musical theatre and acting world in, in, in Toronto, so a, a lot of your staff members are people that back in the day I was performing with on stage and directing. So you really have, you know, the, the cream of the crop of professionals that are that are teaching all of your courses at Sheridan, working professionals. I think we're so lucky. I think that's one of the benefits of Canada. We're a, a bit of a small town that's a country, and uh, I'm really proud of our alumni and our faculty and that, uh, you know, the best in the business do want to come work here and that we encourage our faculty to continue with their professional development in the industry. So uh, I like to say, you know, especially with our adjunct faculty, uh, our students are getting their own, you know, five week or semester audition uh, with people because when they go into the rooms uh, to audition in the professional world, you can bet they know somebody behind the table, if not multiple people behind the table, which is a great benefit to them. It certainly is. Now, um, uh, it's always been a great program, but uh, fairly recently you added the Canadian Musical Theatre Project. Can you talk a little bit about when you started that and what was the seed for that and how it came about and, and how it benefits the students as well as the writers that get to partake in it? So we, I think we had a wonderful opportunity with this transition from a th three-year program to a four-year program and the need for this capstone project that would, um, where the students would have to apply those previous learn, previously learned skills. Uh, I also had a strategic objective of wanting to develop new musicals, believing this would be a, a great un, a academic undertaking, but that it would also provide a cultural need for the industry in Canada. Because um, as we all know, developing musicals uh, is costly, it requires more resources, and um, you know, we haven't seen the level of commitment to development of new musicals uh, in this country as there is in other places. So here was an opportunity um, 
you know, for our students to work with professional writers and a professional director and musical director. Um, they couldn't go to YouTube. They couldn't listen to a cast recording. Um, they were going to be trusting their training uh, to make contributions to the process. So in that sense, we were fulfilling this incredible academic need. And what we provide is specifically five weeks to the writers and the creative team, as you, as you know, as you've participated with us. And my mandate to them is succeed and fail. Uh, this is this is six days a week, uh, seven hours, six to seven hours a day, um, and it's up to you how you use that time. At the end of the day, the end of the process, we have a, our own mini festival of new musicals where we ask 45 minutes of material be presented at books and stands. But I really believe that if we give the writers the freedom to you know come in with new material right on the fly, throw things out, test things our students are gonna get the best experience. And from a student perspective, you see our students begin to trust the training, build confidence, see the vulnerabilities of the writers and the creative teams and see it's okay to make uh, choices that might not be the best choices or down the road may not be a good choice in order to build confidence in making better choices. And for our writers, they get to go away with, um, you know, moving their piece forward. Of course, I say our students are not always age appropriate, but I believe they're of a level of skill and intellect that makes them useful to the process. And in addition to providing this time, we, uh, we have a recording studio here. We have a member of faculty that's a record producer. So we're able to produce high-end demos for the writers that of course showcase our students, but also allow the writers to showcase their shows. And we wanna be either the starting point of the journey or a step on the journey um, that is usually the most expensive part where we can take that risk, know we're gonna get a, a great academic experience for our students, and know that we've contributed culturally um, to our community, uh, our musical theater community. Yes, I can certainly speak to uh, how extraordinary a resource it is, but I, I do honestly think that, that the project is um, a win-win situation uh, on both sides because obviously the writers get this extraordinary resource of, of so much access to these actors. Uh, the, the number of hours is just extraordinary, but also the, the freedom that you offer the writing teams to decide how to use it. Uh, but it's, and of course, it's an amazing gift for the actors to get the chance to originate roles, to, to be right in there in the trenches of what it takes to develop a new musical and, and be having to use their skills every day. So it's an incredible situation on both sides. I know I got the opportunity, I guess it was a couple of years ago, to uh, uh, direct um, uh, a, uh, the team of uh, Leslie Arden and Kathy Elliott were working on their uh, modern adaptation of the story of Maul Flanders, which, which is just called Maul. And we were, uh, so just briefly, to, uh, we, were, we were assigned um, a, a number of actors that were, uh, that there was an audition process for them to get particular roles. And then we had access to those actors, as you say, six days a week, seven, eight hours a day for that whole five weeks. Um, what was extraordinary about it was that we knew that we could use what time we needed. There was a after, after uh, in, sort of into the first week, Leslie and Kathy and I decided that there were some major revisions that needed to happen. So we just told the cast, okay, we'll see you in three days. Take time yeah. off, look at your parts, learn your music, but we're gonna go hole up over uh, on the farm with Leslie and Kathy and, um, and do these revisions. And then we're gonna come back and see what you guys do with them. And, and I know that you had uh, at least two other projects. Do you usually have three projects going at we once? Usually, we usually have four. Last year we did three, but we, we, we have been traditionally trying to do four. Yeah, which is, which is quite significant. Right. And each one of those teams gets to decide how they want to make use of their time and therefore what they're going to be presenting at the end of the process. So as you said, you're able to offer um, writers that are at the very, very earliest stages that are still developing their work, uh, writers that have already have a first draft and want to hear it, or writers that have maybe even already had a production but want to come back and reapproach their show. Um, and yeah. I, I think it's just an extraordinary resource. And I should say, we, we just on an academic level, every Monday we bring all four teams of the students together where they have show and share sessions. They may share a song that was cut from the process and talk about why it was cut, or they may show a scene the way it was originally written and then how it was written the other way. And you find all the rooms, all the processes are so different, but there's so much quality learning going on that when our students, because we do a six show season, and I should say, uh, every year we program one of those new musicals now into our season the following year 
Aww. so we can provide some uh, design elements and choreography and do more of a robust developmental production now. But we, we want the students to take that in, whether we're doing Sweeney Todd or Kiss Me Kate, to approach the work with the same principles w in which they approach uh, the original work with. So it, it, it's become very exciting and we have seen the benefit uh, for our students mm -hmm. in their work. And speaking of the students, I, wanted, I, I, I imagine, I would guess perhaps when you were first getting started that when you would approach writing teams and tell them they could have access to students, they might have been skeptical about eh, students, what do I, I don't want them, you know, they, they won't be good enough. Uh, but your students at, at Sheridan are amazing and professional and committed and wildly talented. And uh, so if you had any reluctance uh, initially, I imagine that's not so much the case anymore. No, I mean, I, it, it's so wonderful because um, now we see the writers and the creative teams are so excited to work with the students. And I love when we come to the end of the process and our writers and teams, it's such a post-show funk. And then they show up to see, I love it because they show up to see the season and see the students in their shows to cheer them on. And then they work with them. They hire them professionally. They had a good working relationship with them in the room and they hire them professionally. So it, it's, it's so exciting. And we're very fortunate to attract a, a high quality of student uh, across Canada and now increasingly more applicants internationally um, and, and the training. I mean, again, we talked about faculty. We just have an incredible group of faculty. And like I said, we've been infusing creativity at the center of what we do that prepares them well for that final year of the CMTP and their productions. Yes, and, and another perk of the CMT program, I, 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 I'm hoping this is still a part of it, uh, what is a recording at the end of the yeah. day of, of, of the material that you have, which again is such a gift to both sides because it's very tough for writers to get demos made, uh, really professional demos made of their work and they really need them in order to try and promote their work and get productions. But it's not an easy thing to do. Um, and, and for singers to actually have their, their themselves recorded that they can use to, to, to promote their own careers. Again, a win-win situation to have those professional recordings, very exciting. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and again, on the learning experience, it gets our students into a recording studio and learning an entirely different skill. We'll provide some uh, ability for orchestration so that there is an orchestration to those demos. And time and time again, we've been told they've helped in the success of landing, whether it's a regional workshop or production or enticing people to, to carry on the development of the work. So yeah, no, it's... it's um, I wanted to provide an environment where we could really um, provide what is needed to do everything we can to get the show to the next level. It's great for the writers, but we know it's gonna create more opportunity for actors as well. And again, I hope some of those students that, that have worked on these shows as alumni uh, will be hired to you know, play those roles again where age appropriate. Yes, I'm sure they will. Um, and uh, I wanted to talk as a case study, uh, obviously you've had many Successes, but it makes perfect sense to use the the most uh, you know prestigious case study, which has come from away. Can you talk to us about um, how that came to you and your involvement in it from the very beginning all the way through till now, till the recent Tonys? Uh, can sure, you talk I, it's process? certainly been a dream <laughs> and quite a journey. <laughs> um, you know, as a producer before I came to Sheridan, uh, I had had an idea. I was was quite moved by the events in, in Gander and the surrounding towns on 9-11. It was a story that was reported uh, here in Canada during that time. And um, it was a story that I continued to be uh, just moved by and continue to research as more information came out over the years. Um, for those that have been to Newfoundland or no Newfoundland, music is such a part of the DNA of that province and of how they tell stories. Um, so I set out looking for writers to write the show, but there were a lot of people that didn't share the same idea, or didn't share that this was a good idea. There was certainly, um, you know, this is a, a difficult story in terms of the background uh, on the day, but understanding um, that this was a story about the outpouring of humanity uh, at that time. Um, I was very lucky to, to meet David and Irene, I, uh, David Hine and Irene St. Goff, who wrote the show uh, after seeing a new musical they had done called My Mother's Lesbian Jewish Wiccan Wedding, which was got a, a, a fringe show that was picked up by the Mervishes, the largest commercial producer in Canada. And I did not know them, but, but sought out to meet with them and we, we just hit it off. And I said, hey, you know, I've been trying to find people to write this show. And this happened just before 
uh, I was approached to come to Sheridan. And as soon as that all happened, I knew that I wanted to launch this incubator and committed to developing uh, Come From Away, which was really our first new musical. Uh, and just a funny story, I, I, you know, when we were casting, there wasn't much written at that time. Dave and Irene had obviously um, gone out off to, to Gander for the 10th anniversary, where they'd done, you know, hundreds of interviews and came back with stacks and their task was to distill this down to 45 minutes. But I remember our students, um, we, we sort of put that in our season as a workshop that year as we were testing things out. And opposite come from away with Sweeney Todd. So you can imagine the students being like, what's this come from away thing? I just want to be in Sweeney Todd. Well, I, I can tell you those students in that original workshop of come from away have some serious bragging rights. But we, we did the first, um, you know, we put them in a room for, for five weeks and said, let's see what you can come up with. And I, I certainly remember, I, I usually like to go into the rehearsal room at the end of the first week to, to hear some material. And uh, I remember hearing the opening number, Welcome to the Rock, and, and just being so taken by it. I don't think there was ever a time uh, early on where we were like, this is going to Broadway. I mean, this was a, a Canadian story and um, a very powerful one. And certainly we did, at that time, we did uh, about 12 presentations of the 45 minutes over two weeks. And um, we did it in a, one of our dance studios because I wanted to keep expectations low. And we kept adding chairs to that room, but you knew there was something special. And I immediately at the end of it invited them back, said keep working on it. And invited them back to be part of our season the following year where we would do a developmental production, which at the time became a two act stage production of the show. Um, that coincided just before that developmental production, and this is in this, uh, um, February, March of 2013. Uh, they had an opportunity at Goodspeed to do Goodspeed's Festival of New Musicals. So they did two weeks rehearsing and a presentation which coincided with our rehearsal period where we had a separate musical director to work with our students. And then after we did our presentation, um, or, or sorry, it was January, February 2013, the show uh, went on to be part of NAMP's Festival of New Musicals, where it was optioned uh, by Junkyard Dog Productions. And I've been that's fortunate. The, that's the National Alliance, just to clarify, that's yes. the National Alliance for Musical Theater that every October presents 45-minute uh, showcases of eight shows that have been selected from often over 200 selections. Uh, and then and shows them to industry professionals, uh, artistic directors, commercial producers. So Come From Away got that opportunity. And I believe you guys were swarmed after the presentation with people who wanted to be involved with the further development oh, of the show. Yes, David and Irene had some decisions to make and uh, they just went with an incredible team uh, at Junkyard Dog Productions. Uh, an, and, interesting, an interesting sideline, Michael. I was on the selection committee that year. At oh, Nam wow who were actually choosing those pieces. So I was in the room when we decided to, and Come From Away was pretty much everybody's number one choice. So it was one of the eight from very early on. And of course you had the demo of our students. Uh, uh, <laughs> that, were, that was the demo. And I like to say that demo is now very much a collector's item. I, I only have a few copies personally, but we distributed many of them. And, and uh, uh, that's what you would have heard on that, on that committee. And um, of course, Junkyard Dog with uh, productions of David and Irene uh, set out to develop this incredible Broadway team led by now Tony Award-winning director, Christopher Ashley. Right. And uh, I've remained on as one of the producers and a creative consultant. And it's been uh, an exceptional journey. We're, we're so proud to have, have launched the show. Um, and we're so proud to have been a part of incredible theaters from La Jolla Playhouse, Seattle Repertory, Ford's Theater, uh, done by the Mervish Productions here in Toronto. And now on Broadway, we've already announced that it's coming back to Toronto with a second company and then it will tour. It'll kick off at uh, Fifth Avenue Playhouse in Seattle uh, in uh, October, 2018. So it is, it is an incredible story and it certainly shows um, the power of what is possible. It's certainly shown me what is possible. Um, you know, we set out to tell this story uh, in a compelling way. David and Irene captured it so beautifully and honestly. And I'm so glad that uh, so many of our students were able to play a useful role. So I like to say, you know, they're not always age appropriate, but, but again, they can be useful. And uh, yes, I think one of our, our, our great case studies is Come From Away. Absolutely. So, so Michael, I, I, we've been asking everybody that we've been interviewing uh, one sort of fantasy question. 
uh, if you uh, were to wake up tomorrow morning and suddenly had access to $100 million uh, to be used for the development of new musicals. And let's say, you know, I've been offering uh, this in American money. So for you, that would be more like 130 million. Like a billion dollars. <laughs> <laughs> So if, if you had access to that money uh, to, to be used for the development of new musicals, how would you go about using it? Well, I'd endow it immediately. I think two, two, two things. I think one, we're really actively engaged uh, internationally. We're, we're working over in China right now, working with pioneering uh, musical theater there. We're partnering on a really exciting project about Norman Bethune, who is a Canadian historical figure that pioneered modern medicine in China in the late 30s. Um, and I believe there's something so exciting about partnering internationally um, with organizations. And I think money like that, one of the big dreams um, that, that I, I love to mention is how we can link up together different organizations, different academic institutions, and how we can send writers out into the world to take a piece of musical theater, develop it in different places, learn different things, and create this really exciting pipeline for development. Um, you know, Broadway is extremely exciting, absolutely, but there are also other avenues that we're really interested in, in exploring too. And this international pipeline, being able to fund that, that travel, those residencies, be able to um, exchange uh, students at a student level and uh, professional actors perhaps when it gets uh, uh, down the line further, there's a lot of value to that culturally, um, I, I think, and, and just creating this international community where there are a lot of people doing this, but we seldom uh, work together because we all have our own silos. And as we know, um, writers need time and they need people uh, and they need to just keep working. So I would use that money to create that pipeline, um, both at the academic level and the regional theater level, and see how we could create uh, that international community. That's fantastic, Michael. I'd love to see that come to fruition. Um, let, we'll, we'll see if that $100 million falls out of the sky. It would be great for all of us. Um, um, to close, Michael, can you give us just a, a brief idea of what's, what's coming up next for Sheridan and the Canadian Musical Theater Project? Sure. So this, as I just mentioned, Bethune, this is, is sort of a really exciting uh, project we'll develop this fall uh, with the Shanghai Dramatic Arts Center, which is a national theater company. We'll have uh, a, a Chinese uh, creative team and actors join our students uh, for that development experience. And then we'll go over in May to Shanghai to continue the development. And we hope to premiere that piece uh, in um, May of 2019. Uh, um, it's Brian Hill and Neil Bartram, our Canadian writers, and Nick Yu, who's the most produced living playwright in China, is our Chinese writer. And we've got a really unique collaboration going on. So we're really, really excited about that on an international level. And then we have a musical called Trap Door um, that's going to be part of our season. And we have a studio theater and a main stage. This is going to be the first new musical we're going to do on our main stage, which is really exciting. This is a musical uh, by Morris Panich, who is one of our leading playwrights, and Annika and Britta Johnson, who are in incredible young women who are sort of the two really hot emerging uh, composer lyricists uh, in the country. And they've written this great story about uh, a figure named Ambrose Small, uh, who's a Toronto character who in 1916, around that time, had a, a, a series of theaters that he uh, cashed out on, got a million dollar check at that time, um, and disappeared, and was never found, and never actually cashed the check. And there were many figures uh, who might have wanted him, uh, him uh, whether it be his chorus girl lovers, the mob, his wife, um, they've created something. I call it a uh, and I know this this might sound strange, but I call it a sexy Toronto or in, you know sexy Chicago Toronto like in Toronto musical. But it's a very exciting piece that I shows shows Toronto in a way we've never seen. So we're really excited to put that on our main stage and uh, give that much importance to the new works that we've been developing. Well, thank you so much, Michael. It's, it's been awesome to see the growth of the program at Sheridan and the Canadian Musical Theatre Project and what's come out of it. And I know we're, we've only seen the beginning and there's lots more to come. So we look forward to watching all of that happen. Thank you so much. And uh, we'll, we'll see you at, on stage. Yeah, take care. <laughs> Bye. Thank you, Michael. Bye-bye.